Everything I've always done has been for um, my own emotion. And it was never done for a brand or a label. It's, it's, it's because I feel it. And when you give it a title, then it, it sort of takes it away from me. I had a brain tumor 25 years ago. And, um, and that was a shock. And um, I had to live through it. I, I came out very well. I was very lucky. Um, but I remember meeting a friend of mine, a, a woman who uh, I know, I knew, who was uh, an editor for the Washington Post. Her name was Nina Hyde. <clears throat> and um, I was just coming out of the hospital, and she didn't, I had seen her on the street, and she didn't say hello to me for some reason. And I, she remained in my mind, so I called her and I said, Nina, I missed you on the street. What, what, uh, and I said, uh, I'd love to see you. You know, would you come, come up and see me? And she then told me that she had breast cancer. <clears throat> and, um, and I said, I can help you. Let me help you. And I said, what do you need? And I felt then that I could cure her. I don't know why I was thinking that my powers would extend any further than they are. But I felt, I guess, because I lived through it, and I felt that my energy would maybe help her. And, um, and we got together, and, and I said, what do you need? And I went to the fashion industry and said, let's do breast cancer. Let's, let's go after this and, and give it some exposure. And, and also support some of the things that the, her doctor had uh, that he was working on. And, and I got very caught up in it, and, and she passed away. So um, I didn't lose it. She gave me the sort of uh, inspiration to go further. I went to uh, um, Sloan Kettering and asked them, is there anything I can do that would help? And uh, at that meeting, um, I guess they thought I was going to come there, you know, with uh, any donation. You know, it was a, for me, it was emotional. For them, maybe it was different. Their hospitals are always in need of, of help, financial help. And Anyway, at that same meeting, there was a doctor, uh, African-American doctor, who was a surgeon, who was uh, from... Harlem and had worked in Harlem, the exact same age as I am. And uh, he talked about Harlem and, and the neighborhoods and that people uh, in underserved areas and in Harlem are not, are dying because they can't get help. And, um, and so his goal was to build a center and so I helped build that center. And I think we all feel a sensitivity about helping some, someone who can't help themselves, helping someone who doesn't have the funds, who doesn't have the know-how. Cancer is not only for the poor and it's not for the rich. It used to be cancer was a whisper, or breast cancer was a whisper. You, women didn't even talk about it. They didn't know about it. It was a hush-hush. Today is not that way. And I think that's been progress. That's progress. It's Dr. Freeman's philosophy, which I believed and experienced with my mother. And, and that was a very strong inspiration for me because I saw it in action. Well, I saw my mother not sure where to go and afraid to leave her environment to go to the city and go to another doctor. That exists in Harlem. It exists in places where people are not comfortable going to a, a hospital that they don't know, the doctors they don't know. And in this case, it's getting them into the hospital. It's getting them to feel good about the navigation system of taking them through it. So in my life, I guess, because I've feel like I've done very well, maybe more than I ever expected. I feel 
I've gotten my share, maybe too much. And I felt that uh, there's a lot more I could do with my life and I can do, tell people. And I hate when people call me philanthropist because I'm not a philanthropist. I don't see it that way. I see it more coming from the heart. <laughs>